I'm going to speak about breeding a mite resistant honeybee here. In this presentation, I'm going to tell you about a very serious threat to our food supply, the Varroa mite problem. In addition to scaring your socks off, I will offer some potential solutions that could save humanity. I will explain in detail some of the miraculous genes that have awakened in the honeybees from Varroa pressure. Solutions through selective breeding can offer massive advantages for the honeybees in the fight against Varroa. I propose using an evolutionary approach with the help from Mother Nature, coupled with the latest technology in honeybee breeding as a solution. Through a small army of bee breeders and queen producers, our food supply could be secure once again. In the 1940s, Varroa jumped from its original host, the Asian honeybee, to the European honeybee. Colonies kept in close proximity to Asian honeybees picked up Varroa infestations and were moved in and out of Asia. European honeybees had no prior selection pressure from Varroa and had evolved no defense mechanisms. Varroa quickly spread to Africa and then overtook Europe. This is mainly done by swarming or robbing behavior. Um, once they're established, they spread very quickly. The first Varroa were documented in the U.S. in 1987, though I did see one report of a mite discovered on the East Coast in the late 1970s. Uh, the one in 1987, I believe, was in Florida. That marked the end of the good old days for U.S. beekeepers. Varroa devastated managed colonies and nearly wiped out feral colonies. The bees were weakened due to mites feeding on their fat bodies, and they spread many viral and bacterial pathogens. <coughs> beekeepers typically view a Varroa infestation as a death sentence unless a chemical intervention occurs. This makes Varroa the number one global threat to honeybees, which directly threatens pollination of our vital food crops. Not good. Host resistance is the holy grail of any IPM system. Host resistance is a defense mechanism that allows an organism to fight back or mitigate the effects of a pest or pathogen. Without true host resistance, there's no hope for abandoning the chemical treadmill that is common to most IPM systems. If the organism can't defend itself, then really chemical intervention is the only option to protect them and you pretty much have to do that methodically because they have no natural means to protect themselves. Host resistance can be selected for in any organism through selective breeding, but is typically the more expensive and time-consuming option compared to chemical fixes. But, I mean, Mother Nature's been doing this since life's been on Earth. Natural selection's where it's at. In the honeybees, VSH is the most effective known gene to protect not only against Varroa, but common brood diseases as well. There are other resistant mechanisms such as allogrooming or autogrooming, where the bees dance around and have a nest mate groom the mite off of them. That's allogrooming or autogrooming, where the bee grooms the mite off itself. Uh, there's a few known effects that make them less attractive to Varroa that has to do with the brood as well. Um, you know, it's kind of like some plants that are less attractive to, to pests genetically. Uh, same concept, but VSH is the most straightforward and it's multifaceted since it's a hygienic mechanism and it allows them to combat not just Varroa but brood diseases. USDA bee scientists tasked with breeding a varroa-resistant bee 
discovered colonies that were somehow limiting the mites' ability to reproduce. The scientists, being scientists, went with the obvious name first and called the behavior suppressed mite reproduction rather than atomic mite smashers or something flashy and cool. Upon further investigation, it was found that the SMR, or suppressed mite reproduction, bees were also very hygienic. The bees were actually sniffing out female mites that were reproducing in brood. The workers would then uncap the pupa, drag it out, and throw it outside. This was breaking the reproductive cycle of the mite. After they figured out it was a hygienic mechanism, the name was changed from suppressed mite reproduction to varroa sensitive hygiene, or BSH, like you hear today. And the picture here is uh, showing uncapping on a VSH frame. And you can see the white faces of the purple-eyed pupae there. Uh, they uncap and recap a lot, and sometimes they just leave it uncapped. Many modern commercial stocks of honeybees in the U.S., I would say most modern commercial stocks, have a complete lack of host resistance. It's like a mite free-for-all bed and breakfast. <clears throat> this ensures that only prophylactically treated colonies survive which is the opposite of natural selection. They have no means of controlling varroa or common brood diseases. This dismal fact influenced me to allow evolution and natural selection to have a primary place in the breeding process. A lot of people said it couldn't be done. You know, bees can't live without a caricide application, but, you know, they have for quite some time, so. But, of course, it's the harder path. Without allowing natural selection to work its magic, a weak, unfit, and unnatural organism is produced. Basically one that the universe does not allow to thrive without human intervention. This leads to pest and disease-prone, unproductive stock, and dra dramatically adds to labor and production costs to keep them alive with chemical treatments, you know, additional management, etc. Et To create the most hardy and resistant stock possible, natural selection is given a primary role in stock selection. Colonies are maintained using standard equipment and management practices. A page laid law closed population breeding model is followed to exclude ad addition of unwanted genetics or susceptible genetics while preserving genetic diversity, which is really important, and to avoid inbreeding. So you can get straight to the point, like with single drone mating, but you just destroy genetic diversity. You, you get there quicker, but you, there's a trade-off always. To allow natural selection to work its magic, no chemical caricides or antibiotics are utilized. Any colonies showing signs of mite damage are immediately requeened using resistant stock. After colonies have survived a full calendar year, they're evaluated for productivity, health, and vigor. A master beekeeper identifies the top colonies. <clears throat> the top colonies are tested using a Harbo VSH assay to verify colonies with the most extreme mite resistance. So this measures uh, the level of reproduction that the mites or that the bees allow the varroa to have. And I, we pick top tier, number four, the ones that allow zero mite reproduction. Daughter queens are reared from tested instrumentally inseminated breeder queens produced the previous year. Controlled mating and intense testing ensures the queens carry resistant traits. So since we're doing instrumental insemination, we know <clears throat> Mom and dad both carried VSH traits, so then you know for sure your, what your daughters are going to carry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Drones are then caught from top scoring colonies. When the F1 daughter queens are mature, about 10 days of age, 
They are inseminated to a diverse mix of drones from top scoring colonies. The eye-eyed or instrumentally inseminated queens are overwintered and tested by Mother Nature, just like their open mated sisters. The following year, F1 queens are again raised from top performing breeders, <clears throat> and the process is repeated. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is just a little graph here I put together. Um, it just shows that <clears throat> how much lower VSHBs keep mite loads. This is like October 1, so this is when they should be about at their peak for the year because brood rearing will stop, you know, in wintertime and late fall, so uh, the var varroa can't reproduce then, so you're going to have a natural drop. But this was just kind of some loose data I would compiled from... A handful of customers that bought my queens and had other queens too and were, were giving me alcohol wash data. So you can see there they keep much lower mite loads. And that's compounds at certain times of the year so it can grow really quickly. This is at the end of the year. Great stock is of no use if it is not available for queen producers to obtain. Queen producers eagerly await resistant stock that has has proven commercial production value and they're usually cynical about it because some in the past which you know it's like a new new vehicle it's going to have bugs um, some of it wasn't as productive as they'd like and so they kind of threw some of it to the wayside trained breeders can produce instrumentally inseminated breeder queens with concentrated resistant genes once in the hands of skilled Queen producers, thousands of daughter queens can then be produced and sold to beekeepers. Once the beekeepers acquire these queens, their colonies are instantly resistant to varroa and brood diseases. As soon as the new brood starts emerging and they, they hit that age where they're very, uh, very hygienic, colonies headed by these queens are producing loads of resistant drones, which mate with their local feral queens and improve the resistance in the whole area. So basically, a drone has no father, only a grandfather. So if, even if you open mate these F1 queens to random whoever they met at the singles bar, you still have 100% resistant drones. Kind of cool. <clears throat> the Varroa problem can be a thing of the past when confronted with a small army of VSH breeders and queen producers. Our bees could then be saved, and the pollination of the vital food crops we rely on could be ensured for future generations. Thank you very much for letting me speak. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know.